Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to take a look at a new case that I've been seeing a lot about. And I've already taken it out of the box. This is sort of like an unboxing, but I'll spare you the cardboard part. And so um, we'll get into it now. One thing that's a little disappointing, uh, this hard styrofoam really does nothing for padding. And for as someone who ships uh, all of his systems like me, uh, it would be nice if this was soft styrofoam, but we'll, uh, if everything else is great, we'll try to let that go. So I have never touched this case before um, in person, and I don't see how I could do it any other way. Um, so my reaction here is genuine. Got a little manual here. This is the NZXT H6. I believe it's called a flow on top of that H6 flow, if I'm not mistaken. It just says H6 series on there. The flow being uh, for airflow. Now, a trend we saw, I'm sure that's loud, sorry. Seven or eight years ago, a trend we saw, and we still, I still see it today, is a, a glass front here. And that is attractive looking. Um, if you care about how your computer looks, and uh, most people, uh, I mean, a lot of people, there's a big variance there, whether they care about what the computer looks like or not. But uh, it's attractive, especially if you've done a good job on the inside. The problem with glass is air does not pass through glass very well. So a lot of these cases that had this glass front with the, the fans in it with all the uh, lights, RGB and all that, well, they were terrible for cooling because the air would have to come in through a little crack in the front and a little crack in the top. And so you'd have these three fans here, which looked good, but were very or fairly ineffective. Now, what a case like this does, it says, well, we want the glass front. But we also want good cooling. So what they've done here is they've put this angled piece of front on here. And they, you've got three fans here behind mesh. And to take it a step back, where we went from the, from the flat glass in the front is we went to a situation where um, all of the fronts are mesh. And the mesh acts as a nice filter and is really good for airflow. And almost all of our cases today have a mesh front. But again, where NZXT is going with this is they say, well, we want the glass front and we want the mesh. And so you've got a wider case. It's not a particularly tall case. A wider case with this angled front here let's see these are intake fans that's what i would have expected so that's good so those fans blow in and then the way you would probably set this case up is you would put a water cooler in the top blowing air out and then of course you have a fan in the back it looks like 120 millimeters is what would fit in the back blowing out <clears throat> and i'll remind you this is the first time i'm seeing this case so i'm sort of figuring this out along the way this removes fairly easily from the top. As you can see, there is a mesh up here and probably you'd be blowing air out. Not a huge fan of having to blow air through mesh because you may end up uh, with some restriction there, but it is a pretty fine mesh. Set that to the side. Um, as you can see here in the top, we've got a lot of mounting options for water coolers. All these different grooves mean different sizes of water coolers you can put in here. And to the naked eye, it looks like you could go, and this is off the top of my head, I could be wrong here, 140 millimeters wide and uh, times probably three fans. So 340s, but I can't swear to that without checking the specs. So I uh, may have to come back to that later. Now, um, one thing you may see from looking at the top is we have a separate chamber here in the top, which is kind of nice. So that is where all of your cable management, <clears throat> if you build this correctly, would go. Now, we've also got mesh here on the side, which is nice. I like to see that. So over here, we've got the spot for the power supply right here. So I guess the power supply, you could just sit it on this little tray. And of course, you put screws in. And then you've got the cable management here through these slots where you can put run your cables. You also can run your cables up here for um, water cooler or the, the CPU power. We've got some 
uh, nice Velcro here for running the, the wires or cables along here. Got some tie down uh, spots here, which I like to see. There is a spot here. It looks like this is for three and a half inch uh, mechanical hard drive, possibly. Just one, it looks like. But yeah, we don't really mess with those much anymore. Uh, they're so slow and unreliable and so forth. Got a lot of Velcro here. See these three tie downs for Velcro. We've got our three fan cables here. It looks like they've got them daisy chained together, um, but I'll get into that more when I build in the case and I'll figure, figure some more of that out. Usually if I've got enough headers on the motherboard, I like to plug each fan in individually. You could daisy chain them, plug them into one connector on the motherboard. So um, it just depends on your preference there. Um, down here in the bottom, we've got all the, the cables tied down and looks like we've got a pretty standard stuff down here. We've got, a, yeah, a USB type C. Um, so we probably have one of those in the front. We do. Now, one thing that's a little interesting about this case is all your front IO is down at the bottom. So you really going to want to put this up on a table and, you know, being it's sort of a showpiece, that's probably where you want to put it. Also, by putting it up on a tabletop, you draw a lot less air, or excuse me, dust in through the bottom. The lower your computer is in the room, the more likely you are to draw dust into it. Um, if you could somehow see all the dust in the room, the dust is very fine or thin up at the top and then down at ground level, there's just all kind of dust moving around. Sometimes you can see this in the sunlight. But anyway, um, <clears throat> just keep in mind your front I.O. is, is kind of down low, which uh, again, if you're going to set it on the floor, could be, just say I wouldn't sit it on the floor. I mean, every time you go to turn it on, you're going to have to bend way down. So you've got USB type, uh, excuse me, USB 3.0 front. Um, so, you know, you plug that in the motherboard. We've got our HD audio, which is front audio, basically. Then we've got our front, um, like, power button, reset switch, uh, power LED. So our front I.O. for that. And what I like is this all integrated into one plug. I don't know why more companies aren't doing this. It's actually fairly rare still to see. NZXT is doing it quite a bit on all their flow cases. But it's just one plug to plug in instead of each of these wires being separate, having to deal with that. So that's nice to see. Um, let's look at the, well, I guess I could take the, uh, the glass side off here. So this is the glass side where the motherboard and the graphics card and all that would go. And that is the chamber here. So your motherboard mounts here and um, then you have down here in the bottom we've got a spot for two fans so um, i'm not a huge fan of uh, putting fans in the bottom simply because of what i mentioned earlier a lot of dust tends to get pulled in through the bottom but if it's up on a tabletop it's not a big deal if you've got a really large gpu it might not be a bad idea to do it looks like this is all yeah one solid piece on the bottom so this doesn't come loose um, they had a little strip of cardboard to prevent the glass side. These two glass side pieces come together, glass on glass. And so they had this piece of uh, cardboard there. Maybe I need to hold on to that for when I ship this. Uh, just to prevent the glass on glass contact. And I guess I could assume there being some sort of damage. Now my understanding, I thought, was you could vertically mount the GPU in here. So in other words, the GPU would normally um, go, I'm trying to get my hand in here right, but like like this way, long way. So you'd be, when you're looking through the side, you'd be looking at the top of the graphics card. I thought this came with a riser where you rotate it and the graphics card could stand up in here. But I need to, I guess, uh, look back into that again. That may be an, uh, an alternate add-on or an extra add-on. So I like what I see here so far. I'm a little disappointed it doesn't have the vertical GPU mount. Um, kind of wish it did. Everything else looks good. Now, the gotchas tend to come when you actually build in a case. I never decide to start using a case without building what I call a prototype in, in a particular case because until you start running those wires and start trying to put the screws in for the various uh, things, you don't know 
if there's a gotcha. For instance, does the motherboard come up so high that when you try to put the water cooler in, the water cooler's hitting the VRM heat sinks on the motherboard, things like that. And you just don't know until you start to build in it. So that's next. I'm going to build in it and see how things come out. And I'm going to also do the research on the vertical GPU mount, because I think if you get this type of case, it's sort of to show off a little bit. Also, by the way, you can put RGB fans here. Uh, I elected not to order the RGB fans. That's, you know, with the, the lighting lights. First of all, it doesn't do anything other than make a bunch of lights. And most of our customers don't care about RGB, but do know this case comes in white and you can also get it with the goofy, you know, RGB fans if you're so inclined. So that's the uh, NZXT H6. More to come on that. All right, so a couple of hours have passed and now I'm back and I have built a PC in this case. Now, one thing I'll tell you is there's a film on the front and on here, a peel for lack of a better term, that I don't want to take off. I want the customer, the final customer to do that. So it does make this a little less translucent, I guess I'll say. Um, so I'll just give this a little spin to start with. It was pretty uneventful to build in. There were a few uh, surprises here and there, which I'll talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and take off this uh, glass side panel since it's not as clear as maybe it should be. So, um, and I'll take off the, the back side too. And even the top side. And as you can see, all that is quite easy. As I drop that. Okay, so um, as mentioned before, you've got three fans here in the front. I can even take that off. And those pass through a coarse mesh filter. And all three of these were plugged into a splitter, but I ended up plugging them into uh, individual headers on the motherboard. But if you were to run short on fans, you know, you, we could use the, the splitter as well. But it gives you individual control over the fans in the BIOS as opposed to all of them behaving exactly the same. Of course, we've got the, the clear glass here on the side. Around here, we've I built this one with a 4070 Ti and an i7 14th gen, the 14700K. Um, I put in an 850 watt power supply, which you see mounted here. And some things that were a little bit interesting about this is normally the power supply on modern cases is down in the very bottom. So what this made for is a very short path from the main motherboard power to the motherboard and a very short path to which goes right through here to get to the CPU power. And so what that meant was there was extra cable to deal with, which um, I just kind of coiled up right here and put a cable tie around. Um, but that was really the only surprising thing, I guess I'd say, the, the channels for the the, uh, the management of the wires works well. Um, also, I did not put any fans down here in the bottom. It does support two 140 millimeter fans. And I would say this would be appropriate if I put, let's say, a 4090 in here. But with the amount of uh, hardware that's in here, 4070 Ti with the i7, we've got three fans in the front. We've got 240 mil fans in the top where the water cooler is and 120 millimeter in the back. That's plenty. There's no reason to overventilate the case. You're just going to turn it into a, an air filter and filter the dust in your room. Uh, by drawing too much air through it. So uh, that is plenty. And again, if we decided to put a 4090 in here, let's say, or 4080, you know, we could add one or two fans down in the bottom. I'd mentioned earlier about a vertical GPU mount, but then it occurs to me that with this opening down here to put the two, one or two 140 millimeter fans, it doesn't really make for a space for a vertical GPU mount, which really, to me, isn't a big deal. Um, they do make, NZXT do, does make other cases which will um, support a vertical GPU mount if that's something you wanted. Um, also, in the top here, hopefully I can do this without a lot of fanfare, um, I'd elected to put a, uh, a water cooler with two 140 millimeter fans. You could also put three, or we could put three 120s. 
uh, six of one and half a dozen of another. Uh, the cooling is very similar on two 140 mils versus three 120s. Um, very, very similar on that. So I think that's pretty much all I needed to say about this case. I mean, there's a lot of good cable management. Don't really try to think. The only negative thing I could really say, I guess, is there's no way to vertically mount the GPU. Um, anything else? Oh, and I guess that the, the, the power buttons in the front I.O. are all down here at the bottom. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a case where you're probably going to want to be putting this on a desk, not on the floor, because it would make accessing the front I.O. kind of difficult. And I think that pretty much covers it.